Well, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to another edition of the Raise Your Bars podcast. Uh, Al Rutan here with my good friend, Chris Baker. Chris, how is life in Florida? Life is good. It's a bit a bit cloudy, a little bit cold for us at the moment. When I say cold, we're in the 70s. So I know yeah. that's I, I looked at Winkler next week and it's going to be in the 20s. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes that is right we are but you know actually today it was very beautiful outside it was nice it was warm it was sunny uh all of our snow melted again so now we have to start yeah. all over again when it happens yeah. um but yeah we're we're back for another episode and you know what first of all folks i want to i want to thank everybody that's tuning in because both chris and i's uh you know they're pub these the same episode is published on our both of our individual platforms and our our listenership is growing and the downloads mm -hmm. are growing so uh thank you thank you very much we sincerely right. appreciate that uh it's nice to see uh well it's, it's nice to see the downloads happening because that means hopefully you're yeah. getting value out of out of the out of the podcasts and our discussions and and like we said most of the times these are not really scripted we we sort of get together and say, hey, what should we talk about tonight? And maybe have a little bit of an outline, but that's about it. And we just sort of go with our own personal experiences, mm -hmm. stories, thoughts on these different topics as we both have grown ourselves in the, you know, in the personal growth and leadership areas over the last number of years of our lives. So tonight, Chris, we're going to, we, we sort of, again, last week we talked about you know, influence from, from John's book, the 21 laws of leadership. And you know what we're picking, I don't know if we'll stick on this topic much longer, but tonight we're going to go with one other topic from his book on the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. And we're going to talk about the law of sacrifice and his, he simply states here that the law of sacrifice is a leader must give up to go up. So Chris, if I were to throw that back at you, what is, what does that mean for you? A leader must give up to go up. Yeah, you know, it's it, it's a great question, and I think a lot of people would would um, maybe struggle with this if we're honest about it. But uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it to me, it goes with something that that um, I actually shared a post today on on LinkedIn, and it was a, a Simon Sinek post. But it was for me, it's 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 moving from me to we, right? Mm -hmm. So it's giving up. Mm -hmm giving up your own self-importance and and um uh, and an ego if you like for your team right because a leader to me a leader is not judged by their own performance they're judged by the performance of their team and therefore you've got to give up that 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 personal ego for the fact that you the the, the it's about it's about we now it's about the team and that's just yeah. my thoughts on it just as we think yeah. I mean what do you think I, I agree. And I think, what well, wasn't it? It's Simon Siddick who wrote leaders eat last, right? Yes. And I think that's really is about putting the needs of others above the needs of ourself. And I think, right. you know, even as, even as John said, so like, again, my, my personal view is to, you know what I, I grew up in old school, big box retail where, you know, the, the leader was at the top of the pyramid and everybody else was the minions doing their bidding. And to the point where we'd have, you know, district managers or regional vice presidents come in the store and walk us around the store and yell and berate us in front of our team because it may have been a little bit messy or untidy or wage costs were too high or markdowns were too much or, you know, stuff like that. And and that just wouldn't fly in today's society. Mm -mm. Um, and, it you know, it shouldn't have been acceptable back then, but it was it was the way it was. Yeah. And and I think that this whole movement of leadership versus management has forced us to look at that model a, a little bit closer and to really and to really examine it and realize that we were not heading on a on a very good path, right? Mm -hmm. That that mot fear motivation is only going to work so long with people until they get fed up and say, you know what, I'm out of here. Right. And, and and go somewhere else. And uh, not that they're there needs to be standards. There needs to be, you know, discipline if necessary. There needs to be expectations set. But at the same time, people want to know that they feel valued, cared about, respected. Right. And and it's our job as leaders to make sure that we're showing that. Yeah. And and this is the you know we've I think we've shared before the saying that people don't leave co companies; they leave bad leaders, right? Mm -hmm. And and the the there is a lot of. Um, 
criticism leveled at millennials and now Gen Z is saying that they're entitled, that they that they want everything quickly, that they if mm -hmm. they don't get what they want, they move on. That I think is unfair because mm -hmm. what what they actually want is they want to work for a company that cares for them they want to work for a company that has got values and has got morals and is has got a purpose right that's right. why we work on a team charter with with the companies we work with right because that's what people want and and i think if you um if you give them that you will create a loyal employee uh, base right that mm -hmm. will that will want to work for you so they want to work there rather than feel they have to work there and they will follow the leader wherever they go and yeah. it's it's it reminds me just as we're talking um about the five levels of leadership right whereas the positional leader the first one is really that that leader that believes in the titles the perks and the fact that right. Hey, you know, look at me. I, I'm I'm the big boss. You do you do what you're told, and then they move up to the positional leader, where it's like, okay, people start to to accept that they're leader and give them permission to lead, and right. then they'll move to the production leader, where they're actually doing something that people say, I want to follow you. Exactly. And then to me, it's then when you move up to the the next level, the the people, that's mm -hmm. when you you're giving the sacrifice, right? In my opinion, because you. Yeah. You, you're developing other people, right? You, you're developing other leaders. And that's what you and I believe in. We we want to develop people. We want to add value to other people so they can be the best version of themselves. Yeah. Right? And it really becomes, it, it really, it, it really becomes you thinking, you know, what's the greater good of the team or the organization over even my own needs. And right. John actually says in the book, and he has, he actually illustrates it with some triangles and talks about rights and responsibilities and leadership. But he says, as you rise in leadership, responsibilities increase and rights decrease. Yeah. Again, because it's no longer about me. It's about like what Chris said at the beginning and about we, and it's about us supporting the team. So I guess that inverted triangle where you're at the bottom now, the tip is facing yeah. down and you're supporting the rest of the team. That really becomes a responsibility. And what does that mean? What does that mean? Maybe it means that you are picking up garbage around the business. Maybe that means you are cleaning the washrooms. Maybe that means you are you know, allowing, allowing that, that pregnant woman that works for you to have that closer parking spots that re, that's reserved for the CEO or the president of the company, maybe <laughs> yeah. it, whatever it means, like right? what, what are you doing to sacrifice maybe a little bit of your rights, maybe your comfort, maybe your time for the betterment of your team so that they can they can, and I remember, I remember Chris Hogan talking once in the talk he did about how um, a team member on his team volunteered their their vacation days yes. for another team member so they could go to take care of their mother or something like that. Yeah. And I was like, wow, how many? I per, I would have a hard time doing that. I'm going to be perfectly honest. My 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 time is very precious to me, so. I would have a difficult time doing that, let alone, I don't think I've ever known anybody personally that's ever said, no, they can take my vacation time and go and go do that. That's a pretty big sacrifice. Whether they're a leader or not, that's leadership material right well, there. Again, you're a leader if you're influencing others, because if you're influencing others, they're following you, therefore you're a leader. And, you right. know, I'd say that all of the time is truth, right? But, and, and I actually have experienced this situation very similar to that. You know, we we had a situation where, unfortunately, one of the the uh, the team members had a had a, a tragedy in, involving their their child, and they they were off work for a long time, um, so much so that they ran out of benefit time, and oh. so the other team members got together and they donated, they they sort of pulled together and donated their vacation time and benefit time to this person, so that they could be paid while they were off. Wow. So wow. it it's it happens, right? Um, it doesn't happen enough, sadly, <laughs> but, but it no. does happen, right? But but it, it's it, it is about about sacrificing things that maybe are beneficial to you for the need of the greater good. Exactly. Right. And and that I think is the it, it, it is the key. And there are there are times, and I think with with this world now, where we we need to show 
empathy, care, compassion, and concern, right? Mm -hmm. And we're not necessarily, I'm not necessarily empathetic by nature, if I'm honest about it, right? I have high standards. I have high standards for myself. And mm -hmm. I always in the past, as a as an early leader and, and even a mid, mid leader, mid level leader, I held other people accountable to the same standards. And that was wrong because not everybody has got or wants to have the same standards as me, right? Very but I, and I, I was I was treating people effectively like the golden rule, like treat other people as you would want to be treated. And what I've moved to after that is the platinum rule, right? Where it's treat other people as they would want to be treated. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, if I'm honest about it, internally, I'm I'm like, I don't agree with what's being done. But externally, I'm showing that empathy, care, compassion, and concern because I want to be that good leader. And it's about the bigger picture. It's not about me. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There's actually a quote in the book where Gerald Brooks says, he says, when you become a leader, you lose the right to think about yourself. Yes. And that was a perfect example right there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that this, 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 um, this law of sacrifice, it really has to be an ongoing type of uh, type of sacrifice, type of law that we need to continually put in place as leaders. And I think a lot of us, if we're not careful, we're going to fall back into that. Well, let's face it. Naturally, we're all a little bit selfish, mm -hmm. right? We're not all wired to give all, all of the time. Yeah. And, we, we, and if we're not careful, this law of sacrifice could easily turn against us as we fall back into a more selfish way of doing things. So what do you think, what are things in just, again, just in your mind and your thoughts, what are some ways that we can continue to stand guard with ourselves to make sure that we maintain this law of sacrifice? Cool. I think what, for me, one of, one of the key things is, is reflection time. Right. What am what am I doing? How am I serving others? Mm -hmm. Right. And and we've talked about servant leadership and, you know, servant leadership is something we we wholeheartedly believe in. Um, and that, I think, goes hand in hand with with the, the law of sacrifice. Right. Because, again, it's not about me. It's about we. So, you know, I try and look at that um, daily and, and, and say, how did I how did I perform today? Right. What did I do? Did I you know, did I put others above myself mm -hmm. or did I fall into that natural sort of selfish state? And sometimes I did do. Right. And I think we all do if we're honest about it. Yeah. But, but the, the, the key is that awareness, right. And recognizing when you do it and then go, let's correct, let's course correct. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it necessitates going and, and, and apologizing. Right. Yeah. And yeah. saying, hey, listen, I, I, I know I did this yesterday and I really want to apologize because that wasn't it wasn't me. It wasn't the right thing to do. Right. Yeah. But owning yeah. up to that. that. And that, again, is sacrificing your own ego and and um, uh, uh, um, self-serving leadership for the fact that you, you, you put in others first. Yeah. And, you know, as you were saying this, the thought came to mind, too, that, you know, sacrifice of our sacrifice of our time could come into play here too. And I'm not talking about the busyness of days and stuff like that, but I mean, the busyness of our day does tie into this, but just sacrificing the time to actually get to know our team. And that's going to help with that yes. law of influence we talked about last time. Sometimes yeah. we just need to learn to slow down. Mm -hmm. And I know we're busy and, and, you know, the demands of business are probably more intense today than they were even last year with the yeah. economy that we're in. Right. So teams are being cut. People are play, being laid off. Potentially the job demands then are getting stronger and those are more, more demanding on those that are left behind. Uh, and as leaders, we need to continue to grow our influence by continuing to spend time investing in conversation with their team correct and, and, and when you when you have that conversation it's about them again it don't make it about exactly. work it's not right? business i i have i have made it a point that that every one of my direct reports i i have scheduled on the calendar every month a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one with them right and i make it clear to them that this is their time 
right? right? It's not compulsory, but I've committed that time to them. Mm -hmm. um, and it's to talk about whatever they want to talk about. It's not to talk about performance reviews or, or what's going on at work. Now, if they come and they want to talk about that, Absolutely. We'll talk about it. But, you know, I say, if I want to talk to you about a performance thing, I'll make a separate appointment and we'll talk about that. Right. But this is about you. And and really, the, the, the whole intention is that is to create that connection. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, John talks about everyone communicates, few connect. And, and I took that. I was the first of first one of John's books that I ever read. And I've got it. I've still got it. And it's got little sticky notes all the way through it. I actually read it on a trip to England uh, to see my parents. Um, and and I took it to heart because I didn't pre prior to that. I didn't connect with people. I couldn't right. have told you who my my team members. Did they have kids? Did they have pets? Where did mm -hmm. they go on holiday? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. What car did they drive? You know, what what was their favorite color? What's their favorite fruit? Well, I couldn't have told you any of that stuff. Right. But now I know more about my my team because I'm creating this connection. And then what that does is that that goes to another law, the law of buy in. Right. Where they they buy into the concepts that I'm I'm uh, I'm, I'm wanting to lead by because right. they trust me. Exactly. Right? And they know that I care about them. So they will go the extra mile because of that. All right. And again, I'm nothing special. Right. Anybody can do this. But like what you were saying, Al, it's it's sacrificing time. You know, I mean, that's I have 37 direct reports. So that's um, what, 18 and a half hours per month. Yeah. Right. That I'm committing to them. Yeah. Right. Which, OK, is only just over four hours a, a week. But most people will will not take the time to schedule four and a half hours a week because they'll say they haven't got time. Well, guess what? Exactly. If you don't schedule it, you won't have time. No, exactly. That's schedule and, it, you will. <laughs> and a time mastery program, right? How you have to schedule your exactly. day. Or all, the day is yep. going to schedule you. You're going to have those yep. distractions that pop up. So I think I, I think at the end of the day, when we talk about this, this law of sacrifice, right? It, it really needs to become a leadership trait that we're living out, right? And it needs to, you know, and the decisions that are made because of your sacrifice may not be beneficial to the leader personally, but at the end of the day, it's crucial for your team and your organization's success for you to live this out. So I, I you know, I think we're coming to the end of our time here, Chris, any, any last thoughts around, the law of sacrifice. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I maybe like encourage people to think about think about leaders that they know, right? It could be could be public public figures. Martin Luther King is an example that John uses in the book, but it could be yeah. people that you know in your life, right? That are leaders, mm -hmm. um, even your parents. They're still leaders, right? Exactly. When you look at them can you recognize anything that they've sacrificed for the greater good of either their team or if it's your parents for the greater good of their kids? Right. Right. And, and if you, you recognize what they've sacrificed, then start to look at yourself and say, what do I sacrifice for the good of others? Mm -hmm. And if you're not doing it at the moment and that's okay, because if you don't know, you don't know, but now, you know, <laughs> all right. Hey. What, what can you sacrifice for the good of others? Yeah. Right. And, and maybe that could even be with your spouse, all right? Maybe it's if you if you play golf and you play every weekend, maybe you cut that down to every other weekend. And then right. every other weekend you spend doing something with your spouse. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, it, there's all sorts of things that you can do with this, right? And we when we talk about leadership, we're not just talking about business. We're talking about life, right? And that's why right. we have our different Raise Your Bars communities and you know, I meant to say at the start, one of the things I've noticed is as our listenership is going, so is our membership to our communities, right? Yes. You know, we're, we're proving people into legacy creators now and yes. uh, into the, the business group. And, and we still get people joining the personal growth solutions. And that's great. Right. You know, what are you sacrificing and what can you sacrifice to help others?
Yeah. And I think one of the things here, and John asked this in the book itself, is to become a more influential leader. So if you want to grow that influence in your life and go back to listen to last week's podcast, if you haven't already, Mm -hmm. but if you want to grow influence in your life, are you willing to make sacrifices? And I think your answer to that question will determine your level of success in 2024. Correct. If you answer, yes, I'm going to make sacrifices, Alan, Chris, I'm on board with this. I'm on board. You know, John Maxwell, I love this. I love, you know, go buy this book and read this book. Uh, you know, you're on board with this law of sacrifice Then great. You're about to turn the tides for your organization, for your marriage, for your family, uh, in, in 2024 and beyond. If yeah. you answered no to that, well, then I'm sorry. You probably won't get much more value out of any of our podcasts yeah well you're probably not listening now either so <laughs> yeah. you won't even know we'll this out. <laughs> <laughs> anyways that's that's great well again everybody thanks for listening and again raise your bars uh on search on facebook for raise your bars you'll see personal growth solutions you'll you see a business building page and you'll see legacy creators legacy creators is for men 40 years old and uh, 40 years and older who really want to uh, grow their influence or yeah. leave a lasting legacy. And we're really just getting, we're just scratching the surface in that community right now. We've got, we've got uh, a lesson that we're going to be doing there shortly. It's almost fully written. Uh, and then we got to get some worksheets done up for it and some PowerPoint slides. And we're going to do a teaching in there on really creating your legacy. Uh, so again, join us there, men, uh, if you're 40 plus, you know what? What the heck? If you're under 40 and you want to get in there and get a jump start on things too, we're not going to say yeah. no. no. Um, uh, and then, but you know, again, if you got value out of this podcast, first of all, thanks for listening. Second of all, share it, share yeah. it with friends, family, coworkers, and, uh, and, uh, help us out by spreading the word. So everybody, thanks for tuning in again. Uh, Chris, have an amazing evening. You too. Al. Take care, everyone. All right. Bye.